Hello again, welcome back to Trapped Videos. In the last video, we've covered the Google Calendar integration with Trapped. Now, let's move on to Outlook Calendar. It works in approximately the same way with a few small differences. Let me show you. So just like with Google Calendar and Google Meet, to enable Outlook Calendar in Microsoft Teams, you first need to click on the Enable button in Features and Integrations. Once it's activated, there are two ways you can establish the connection. The first and the most popular way is through Settings User Roles. Why am I going through user roles firstly? Because you need to enable the login for your employees. So click on these three dots, enable login, and choose whether the password is gonna be auto-generated or if you're gonna create one manually. And if you're gonna send the login information to the user or if you're going to require them to choose a new password when they log in. When you click on send, this employee will receive an email and he will be able to log into their employee account. The login URL is the same as the URL you as an admin use to log into your account. So this would be the employee logging in and provided that he has the password, clicks on continue and he's in. Now as an employee, he has limited view, but uh, why is this the most popular way to link Outlook calendar? Because the employee accesses his account settings. Then through integrations, he just clicks on Outlook Calendar and connect account. Now, the employee needs to log in. Depending on your security measures, uh, or the employee's security measures, they may, may be required to send the code to their mobile phone or use uh, something like an authenticator to log in. But anyway, um, they can choose whether they want to stay logged in or not. But this is only for the Outlook account, which means that if you open up Outlook in another tab, you will stay logged in. Uh, regarding Trapped, it doesn't make a difference if you select no or yes because Trapped will keep you logged into your Outlook account. Now, um, this is the main reason why people want to, why people choose to allow their employees to log through in through account settings, because they can choose multiple from their Outlook account that will block busy events coming from Outlook. As you can see, after I added one, two, three, four, five, six. After I've added six um, drop downs, I don't have a sixth account, a sixth calendar, so I cannot select it. But this option becomes disabled once you add six uh, calendars to be used for blocking time in traffic. Um, so busy events created in these five uh, calendars will be blocked in traffic. And this is the calendar that will be used to add Trapped's appointments. So Trapped's appointments created for this employee will be added to this calendar while Trapped will be blocking events, busy events, in these calendars. We can also add another account up to, again, six accounts can be added here if you need the employee to be linked to multiple accounts. This option allows the employee to automatically add pending appointments. This again depends on the default status of the appointment uh, or the status of a group appointment until the minimum capacity is reached. So pending appointments will be added to Outlook Calendar if this option is enabled. Include buffered time and Outlook events will also add the buffer time before or after the appointment if you enable this. An example would be service duration is one hour. Buffer time after the appointment is 30 minutes. The appointment is booked at noon and it should last until one. But since there's a half an hour of buffer time, it will last until 1.30. So the event in Outlook will be saved as a busy as an event from noon until 1.30. Event title and event description uh, along with these two options are individual per employee. So if I add service name 
with customer full name, it will only apply to this employee. So they can also configure the description. So let's say customer full name um, booked the service name on appointment start date and time and save this. This is basically it when it comes to allowing your employees to log into their own Outlook account. Now, as an admin, when you access features and integrations and set up the Outlook calendar, when you connect the account, we will use the same account. just to show you guys how this looks. So when I log in as an, uh, as an administrator, when I scroll down, I can see the event title, the description, and again, the event title is not the same as the one we configured for the employee in here. Uh, and I can see that this employee is now overridden. What this means, if you see overridden by employee, that means that your employee logged in logged into their account and they accessed account settings, integrations, and connected their own Outlook account. Now, if you as an admin don't want that, you can click on these three dots and disconnect the employee. So it warns you that they connected their personal Outlook account and you say, okay. So when I go back in as an employee and I refresh the page, I will see uh, that I'm able to connect the account. But if I select one of the accounts from here and I save the changes, the employee will not be able to connect their account. So it says you're currently connected to Outlook Calendar by admin. Overriding this connection is not available. Why? Because the admin chose to connect the employee to one of the calendars from admin's Outlook account. And this is basically how it works. Um, these two options have been explained while we were covering the employee's integration page. This one is actually pretty important if you want to keep this configuration. So when you enable this, all busy slots from Outlook Calendar will be blocked for employees linked to these calendars. So, if I create an appointment on a Tuesday, create an event on a Tuesday, it needs to be set as business. So just lunch from one till two, make sure that the time zone is correct, and save. This is the event created back in draft. We access October 8th and we currently cannot see this event because in order for an employee to show up in the calendar they need to have at least one appointment created. I choose the mentoring session at the office with John Doe on, on a Tuesday. I will only be able to book until 1 p.m and from 2 p.m. So the time slot between one and two is not there. Let me just book this real quick as now that I've booked this appointment, I can check the calendar and I will now see John Doe. And I will switch to October 8th where I can see the mentoring session with John Doe. And now once we've shown the Outlook Calendar events, the Outlook Calendar event from John's calendar is here. And this is the lunch from one to two. As you can see, the mentoring session is also added in here. And since we haven't configured the um, description in here, and since John is now linked through the integration page, we can only see the service name which is mentoring session so if we add the description again uh, customer full name booked uh, service name 
appointment on start date and time and we save that we will not be able to see that this changes right away so what you need to do if you want to if you want the changes to be applied to the event just simply edit this appointment and save it and now when we check back we will see John Hancock booked a mentoring session appointment on October 8th 11 a.m. so this goes for all appointments created in the past as well before you establish the Alpha Calendar connection so if John had any appointments in the past before the Outlook calendar integration was enabled, all you need to do is simply edit those and save them without making any changes and track will go through it and push these to Outlook calendar so they are updated. In short, I've shown you how to block busy events in Traft and how booking an appointment in Traft shows up in Outlook calendar. One thing worth mentioning and what I cannot show you now because I don't have a business account or an educational account is Microsoft Teams integration. As mentioned here, Microsoft only supports online meetings with Microsoft 365 business or educational, not personal accounts. So this is very important. If you don't have a 365 business or education account, you will not be able to use Microsoft Teams. And lastly, if you enable this, the event attendees will be added to the Outlook calendar event. This is important for group appointments as well, since they will all be added as attendees. That's about it. Pretty similar, right? Now, if you guys have any questions about this feature or if you have a suggestion for our next video, please leave those in the comment section below. And while you're here, as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon so you're notified about all upcoming videos coming from Trapped. Until next time, take care, guys.